and I welcome you to our lesson number four of this module. So in this case now, we are going to look at our unbalanced star connected loads because on the previous one, we've looked at our delta connected loads. So in this case as well, you can either have a star or a delta source, which then gets connected to a star. So this first one is showing us our delta to star configuration and how they get connected. Please notice with your voltages and your currents that you are given in the configuration, which we should be familiar with by now. Then we also get our star star configuration, which is as in this case. Now, I just want you to know that I've made some red markings of an N, which is a neutral and an S on the load side, which is another neutral, but I'll explain why I've called it an S now, whereas the normal one, I'm calling it a neutral. So if we come to this slide, I've now even drawn a line between my supply and my load side where I'm showing this S value. Now for three-phase system that are star connected, we usually have the neutral point, which is N, okay? So in this situation now, I'm introducing the S on my load side, which I'm saying is no longer at earth potential because why? I've got an unbalanced system that is on my load side. So since we know that we usually have a neutral on our star connections, we call this type of a system a three-phase four-wire system because our neutral usually has a wire by itself as well. Then our four wire systems are used when we have two different voltages, okay? And in this case, what are those voltages? It's our line voltage and it's our phase voltages that we have. In the four wire system, the neutral is available to keep your star point at earth potential. And then you have your three lines, which is your A, B, and C line that gets connected to our unbalanced Y connected load. Then our star point in the three phase impedance is not at earth potential, right? Which is why we've introduced the S. Then the voltage between our neutral of the source and the floating neutral, that is the S, we call it that it is the displacement neutral voltage. Or we say it is the star point potential, all right? So I have drawn in that line and that line is going to be our VSN. Then we are going to really concentrate on Milman's theorem in order for us to do the solving of what we need to do in this star connected unbalanced loads. So the first thing is to first define what is this Milman's theorem when I'm looking at it in layman's term. And what we have basically in the circuits that you're seeing in front of you is you have a number of source voltages, V1, V2, and Vn as shown in there. And you've got the resistances which are R1, R2, up to Rn. So the arrangement of Milman is saying that we can replace all of these by an equivalent single voltage source, which is V, and the resistance will also put in an equivalent series resistance, which is R, and that gives us the diagram that is on your right-hand side. So in other words, it determines the voltage across your parallel branches as well as those resistances across those parallel voltages. Therefore, reducing your complexity of electrical circuits into a simpler circuit that you can work with. Now, when we come and we have our star connected loads and we're talking about Milman's theorem, we then saying that if any number of linear impedances, that is your ZA, your ZB, and your ZC, they meet at a common point of N, okay, which is your neutral point, and the voltage is from another point, which is your S point, 
to the free ends of these impedances are known. Then the voltage drop that we have, which is that Vsn we introduced, becomes this equation, okay? Which is a summation of your voltages and your impedances that you have in your system. Remember the Ya, Yb, and Yc simply stands for Ya is equal to 1 over Za, then the other one is 1 over Zb, and Yc is 1 over Zc. So therefore, if I can summate this entire scenario now, having worked out what Vsn is, you can be able to work out what Vas, Vbs, and Vcs is, which are your voltages on your load side of your circuit. So here we give it an example where our system is a delta supply source which gets connected to our star load and they give us the value of the impedances in our star load. They tell us that our reference point is EAB and uh, there is no degrees to it so we assume that it's at zero degrees and that we've got a negative phase sequence we're dealing with in the system. Now they say we must utilize our Mill Millman's theorem and calculate what our line currents for this scenario would be. So going into this example, the first thing that I do is I draw my normal ACB configuration that is showing my negative phase sequence, okay? And in my mind, before I start drawing my actual voltages, I must remember that in a negative phase sequence, my line voltage will lag my corresponding phase voltage. So I've drawn in my phase voltages as well, showing the CBA configuration. Then I move off and I now start drawing my corresponding phase voltages, okay? So if my phase voltage needs to be lagged by my line voltage, it means that I must choose a voltage and then draw above it because I've been given my line voltage. So therefore, I make a parallelogram on top of my EAB, right? And therefore, I can see that that voltage will then be EAN. How do I know it's called EAN? Because to draw this voltage, I've brought across my negative ECA, and therefore the voltage is drawn between EAB and ECA. A being the common letter between the two voltages, hence it is EAN. My next step then is to draw the other two phase voltages, and they must be at 120 degrees on either side of my EAN. So there are my two other voltages. I've drawn them in, but how do they know which voltage is where or if each voltage is correct in where it is? By making sure that if I rotate it to the axis, it will follow the negative phase sequence, which means that my C followed by my B, followed by my A, will go through the point or the dot that I usually have in there. Now what you can do is you can write out all of your voltages to say exactly what they are. Remember, the reference between your line and your phase voltage is the square root of 3. And then put in all of your degrees next to your voltages. I then can go and work out what my VSN is. Why? Because for my VSN, I needed to have my phase voltages. Hence, I had to draw them all in to make sure I had all of those degrees. I can then work out the value for my VSN, which is there, 230. Once I have got that done, I can work out what my phase voltages are, that is my VAS, my VBS, and my VCS. Following those formulas, and those will be my voltages onto my load. And then only I can now work out what my line currents are going to be in each of those sections by using 
Ohm's law. I will go on to the second example using this theorem. And in this example, I'm given that you've got again a delta source connected to my star load, and you've got 400 volts given as your reference of VBC. And this time around, it's ABC rotation. Now remember, ABC is a positive phase sequence rotation. So I need to again calculate my and I start by doing the same thing again. I draw showing my ABC how it should go. Then I put in my line voltages that I've been given, noting what I've been given as my reference point. And then I can be able to go and draw in my phase phase voltage. Now it is a positive phase sequence, so I must remember what? I must remember that the line voltage is going to lead this time around. So when I draw this phase voltage, I must know that I'm drawing it below or behind my line voltage. So I've drawn it in and it is EBN. How do I know it's EBN? Because it's between voltage EBC and the negative of EAB, common letter being B. So the next step now is to draw my other two phase voltages and they must be at 120 degrees from the EBN I have just drawn in. So there they are, my two other voltages. How do I know how to name them? I know I must name them such that when they rotate in the axis in an anti-clockwise direction, they must rotate in an A, B, C manner, which means the one at 90 degrees above should be an E, A, N, and the one that is below should be an E, C, N. And there I have marked them accordingly. I then write on the side all of my voltages so that I can remember what they all are and remembering the reference between my line to my phase voltage being that square root of 3. I then go put in what my VSN value is going to be by putting everything into the formula. The next step is then for me to calculate what my voltages in each phase of my load are going to be, VAS, VBS, and VCS, followed by calculating my currents where I am using Ohm's law in order to get them. And there, that solution has also been so we are now on the last slide of this lesson and I want you to go to your tutorial one again and this time around you go and do question number two, the first part of it, where you are given a delta source and a load that is stuck connected and they say that it's a negative phase sequence with VAB as your reference and you must utilize the Millman's theorem in order to calculate your line currents. Thank you. I hope you have learned from this session and we will see you again on our next lesson of module one.